Did you know Google brings in a whopping 80% of the world's online traffic? Yep, you heard me right. 80% of the world's online traffic starts with a search. And that's why you need to get your keyword research strategy on point. Over the last 10 years, keyword research has been an art and a science that I have thoroughly loved. I've been able to get my websites to rank for over 40,000 keyword positions in Google and infinitely more for the clients and blogs that I've written for. At Continent Scale, within four months, we went from a whopping 160-ish keyword rankings to over 15,000 keywords indexed in Google. So you might be asking, how do I go after the right keywords? What are those keywords? How do I find them? And if you do this as a service for your clients, maybe you're asking the same thing for them. In this video, my goal is to give you the essential guide to finding the right keywords. And we're not just talking trending topics. We're talking evergreen keywords that can pull in traffic for months, if not years to come. So let's get into it. The ultimate keyword research strategy for your blog posts in 2023 and beyond. Plus, I'll show you how to use AI to shortcut the content creation process and literally create 3000 word plus SEO blogs from this keyword in minutes. You won't believe it. So let's jump right into it. doing keyword research, the first step is to really understand and take the time to make it make sense. What makes up an ideal keyword? Because I can tell you, I actually spent a couple years here and there was some trial and error on my part. I thought a good keyword was a keyword that just had a low competition score. So I went after completely unrelated keywords, got to rank in the top of Google, but those keywords did not bring any clients. So I don't want that for you. And what I want to do is paint a picture of what really makes up an ideal keyword. So you can see it here where we have a Venn diagram and the intersection is really what makes up that ideal keyword. And this is consistent, by the way, with everything in my books, everything in Continent Scale's own keyword research strategies. They're doing it wisely, intelligently, and smart um, with a lot of wisdom the same way that I finally learned through some trial and error how to do. Um, so this works and it's reflected in tens of thousands of keyword rankings that I've been able to get and what we're currently ranking for in our own sites, including Content Hacker and Continent Scale. So that said, where the intersection is, is a combination between what you sell, by the way, if you have clients and you're reselling this as a service, apply this to them. If it's for you, apply this to you. So it's an intersection between what you actually sell, your industry, your audience, and all the terms out there for what it is you do and who you serve. So let's say you're a marketing consultant. You sell content strategy. That's the left side of this diagram. Over there on the right are marketing services, content strategy services, marketing consultant, tons of keywords, right? So how do we find the perfect fit that's gonna bring in ideal clients for us? Well, we're gonna filter it by competition numbers for that keyword, which is the difficulty of how easy or hard it is to rank for that keyword. And we're going to go after informational searches. What is, how to, best of, things like that, that really qualify that person according to top of funnel, also known as tofu, but that's going to bring in a lot of traffic and awareness for your brand. So this is a winning strategy. It will work if you put in the work. So how do you put in the work? Well, you can really get your keywords from four sources. First of all, just doing actual keyword research strategy. Keyword research strategy is a tried and true endeavor. You need the right tools and you need the right approach and you will win every time. Find your keywords, get the data on those keywords. Don't guess at the keywords you're going to rank for. Secondly, hot YouTube videos. This can be a source of great content. I'll show you how to write these pieces in minutes, by the way, as well. So not only do you get the research done, but you can actually get the content piece written in minutes. And then competitor research, top ranking blogs in your niche that are working well for your competitors. I'll show you how to essentially write a fresh piece of content in minutes. By the way, AI, it's the secret here. It's still good content too. So 
How can you rank for a competitor's keyword? How can you outdo them? That's another great source of keywords. That's a great strategy. And then honestly, your ideas in raw formats. This is critical actually because of AI. So AI and the opportunity to create content at scale so easily has really made it difficult to break into certain industries and stand out. How do you stand out? You. Everything comes down to you, what you have to say, how controversial you want to get, how raw you want to get, how original you want to get. That's your ideas. And it's going to come from you. So we want to take that, map it to keywords, and then essentially create great content. And I'll show you how to do that as well in minutes. Pretty cool. Using AI. So let's get into it. So here's an example of what makes up an ideal keyword. Let's say we're a realtor in South Texas. We know we can go after the obvious, right? Texas realtor, Texas real estate, homes for sale in Texas. But which keyword is the right one? So after some keyword research, I found this keyword, why choose me as your realtor? And here's why it makes for an excellent keyword. So we're using SEMrush to do this data research. It's a more costly tool, but it's one of the most robust tools on the planet for keyword research. And I've tested quite a few. This one's amazing. If it tells you the keyword difficulty is low, it's pretty accurate and you're gonna be able to rank for that keyword. So here are a few keywords I found that I would go after if I was a realtor in South Texas. I would create a long form blog for why choose me as your realtor? How to sell land in Texas without a realtor? How do I know if my realtor submitted my offer? Why? Because of the numbers on these keywords. And let's go ahead and switch actually over to SEMrush. So I wanna switch over to SEMrush to really show you how this works. So in SEMrush, you wanna click over here on the left, the keyword magic tool. This is where I live to find great keywords. You're gonna see this, enter your keyword. So you're gonna put a seed keyword idea, again, based on what it is you do. Are you a marketing consultant? Make that your keyword. You could even start with marketing. Whenever you're doing keyword research, you really wanna think like a detective. You have to scout out the best terms for you. Use common sense. So if you're selling homes, would you go after the keyword, how to become a realtor in Texas? No, you wouldn't. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna take out the word Texas and we're going to put realtor and see if that gets us more to questions people might be asking to actually find a realtor. So let me explain some of these numbers and they're gonna be the same. Sometimes they're called something a little different, but they're going to be the same no matter almost what tool you use. So the first one is intent. This is the intent behind that search. These are informational searches if we're in the question keywords. Next is volume. These are the amount of monthly searches for that keyword and this is tracked over a full year, a 12 month period. Next we have the trend. This is the interest of searchers. You can see some are going up, down, up, down. This one's going consistently up. So that can give you some insights. And then we have KD, keyword difficulty. I'm gonna show you the magic of this number in a minute. We have CPC, this is the cost per click. We have our competition, our competitive density. This is a scale from zero to one in fractions. So one is the most difficult to rank for. The numbers I look at are keyword difficulty, the volume and the trend. The number I place the most importance on is keyword difficulty. Why? If you're trying to go after a keyword with 80, you may never get that ranking. You're up against high quality, well-built, robust domains that have H. But if you're going after a keyword difficulty of let's say 30 or 20 or 10, then the likelihood of you being able to rank for that keyword is so much greater. So look at this, whenever I sort by lowest keyword difficulty, I just click twice to get there in SEMrush, I see this, why choose me as your realtor? It has a keyword difficulty of five. That's amazing. I can probably rank for this with a brand new website and just a little bit of link building if I get consistent with my content. That's pretty epic. So that's why this was one of the first keywords I chose. You can see the strategy behind it now. In this keyword phrase called, why choose me as your realtor? That's why I chose that because it has a truly magic number, five. When we look at one out of 100 on the difficulty score and we wanna think about intent, right? If we think about this Venn diagram, 
It has to be mapped to our services. What are our services? We sell real estate. Why choose me as your realtor? Here's how I would position a content piece to get clients for this. Why choose me as your realtor should showcase you. It should be all about your unique, quirky, amazing, different traits where you're talking about the things you like that help your audience, that help your clients. So essentially you're positioning it not just as a keyword search, but this is also a very social media friendly piece, like the top 10 things to know about me. So you know why choose me as your realtor, right? Something like that, where you have a unique angle and a unique spin. And I can tell you, this really works if you think about how can I put my unique spin on this kind of a keyword. You can still have AI write it. If you're going after a personal angle, which I would absolutely do with this keyword, you wanna edit it heavily so you embed your story. This is another good keyword. How do I sell my land without a realtor? And what you could do here is some myth busting. I love these kinds of keywords because there's so many unique plays you can do. Again, why is it a good keyword? Oh my gosh, 13 out of one to 100. That's an amazing score. And you know, the biggest question I get is, well, Julia, there might be only 20 searches a month. Here's the thing. Informational searches likely get more and you can rank for more related keywords because of the way the people also ask works, including, yes, in the evolution of generative AI. So more questions appear below that question once that person starts learning about the answer to their question. They can click drop downs, they can get more information. You can rank in those additional questions that are related to the main question. So that's the magic here. Don't look at the volume of 20 and just discount it. No, and by the way, what would 20 ideal buyers do for you? <laughs> if we're talking Texas real estate, that's some serious commission. So less is a lot more. You wanna put emphasis on your keyword difficulty score. So let's actually write these two pieces before we go into the additional strategies. And by the way, a quick shout out, we have a template for you. It's gonna be in the link to this description where very, very simple, nothing fancy at all, but hey, simple makes your life sustainable. <laughs> so you can grab this Google sheet and you're literally just going to write keywords in it, your broad topic, the source of where you got that keyword and the stats. That's it. Then what you can do once you build this out is you can actually download it as a CSV and you can upload it into the AI writer. Now the AI writer I use all the time is continent scale. I'm going to actually show you what it would look like to write this piece of content. Let's do both of them. How do I sell my land without a realtor? And then the other one, why choose me as your realtor? So the reason I'm going to use continent scale is because it has SEO insights built into the tool and it goes and looks at what's ranking in the top of Google and writes content based on that. That is a skill set that I used to have to train a writer on how to do. Hey, go look at the top of Google, break down, distill that information and write something that'll rank and do better than those top pieces. Well, with Continent Scale, you don't have to hire a writer to do that. Continent Scale does that for you. And it's real time. It's looking at what's in the top of Google then and there when you hit the create content button. So let me create a project and then we'll come back and create this piece of content. Okay, so I filled out my project level. I'm just gonna do it for a Texas real estate website, but you would fill this out for your website. And again, we're inside content at scale, which is the leading SEO AI writer. So for long form SEO content, this is the one that I would recommend using. So your tone of voice, you can leave it to custom and actually train a model with your own content. Like let's say you have some content you really like, you can put that into the tone of voice after we set up the project. But for this right now, I'm just gonna go with informational, informative, create the project, and then we can get going with our keyword pieces. So to add the SEO pieces to the queue and have it actually write those, we're going to click from a keyword and then we can upload the CSV, right? We can click this attachment button or we can just plug in the keywords. So I'm going to add in these two keywords and come back and show you what it looks like. And for this particular AI writer, I'm not going to add any context because I could actually mess it up. It goes and looks at the top of Google and it writes fresh content based on what's ranking. We want it to do its job really well. So we're not going to fill this out. 
Okay, so those are now in the queue. We're gonna come back to them and see how they look and we can have like fully written blogs in minutes. So this is truly magic, I'll tell you, because the hardest part is not the keyword research. Once you learn how to do it, the hardest part was content creation. So with AI, our job creating this content just got 10 times easier and that's pretty epic. I wanna show you another example of killer keyword research. This comes from somebody that I trained at Content Hacker. Her name is Jackie Alcorn. She runs a brick and mortar store that sells quilts. And this place is amazing. It's based on her story of loving quilts from the time she was little. There's just a lot of heart and soul in her brand. So what she is doing is building up primitivestarquiltshop.com with pillar SEO content written by AI. So here's how she's doing it. So first of all, if we think about that Venn diagram, what do you do? She sells quilts. She sells it in a brick and mortar store and an online e-commerce store. Okay, her topics are quilts, quilt shop, quilts for sale. We could go local or we could go pretty much worldwide because she has an e-commerce store. So one keyword that Jackie decided to go after was ways to display quilts. And whenever we go to SEMrush and we plug in that word quilts mm -hmm. and we look at informational searches according to questions, right? We're sorting it. There's a ton of keywords that come up for her. Another example could be how to break in a quilt with two out of one to a hundred. The difficulty score is two. Are you kidding me? I'm jealous. In marketing, I don't get breaks like that. My keywords are like 30, 40, 50, 60. So these kinds of numbers make me so excited because of opportunity. You know, and it's why keyword research and SEO is so powerful because I just simply think it's underrated. A lot of people think they should do ads right away. They burn money on an offer that's not established. They do Instagram reels and they rush to these other tactics that are not as high opportunity. Anyway, rant aside, Jackie ditched doing only social media, only ads, and she decided to do SEO. So now she's ranking for the keyword ways to display quilts. And she wrote this piece completely with AI. And she added in her style. She added in pictures of quilts. She made it personal. That's how to do it. So she found this great keyword, right? Ways to display quilts. It was very low in the difficulty score. So that's an example of phenomenal keyword research. And as you can see, it actually is working for Jackie. She's ranking in the top of Google. So let's go into YouTube videos and competitor research. And you can keep this really simple. Here's how to do it. So for YouTube videos, you're just opening YouTube and you're putting in your topic. For Jackie, quilts. For me, marketing. So then you can sort by, in the filters, you're gonna sort by channel and you're gonna look for channels that are doing a great job teaching marketing. There's a lot of good stuff here I'm seeing. Marketing Secrets, that's a great channel with Russell Brunson, Neil Patel. We got some really good stuff. Marketing Against the Green, that's HubSpot. So I'm gonna go up here though and I'm gonna pick Marketing Tutorials. I like the word tutorial. It kind of matches the idea of long form informational based content. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna grab a good video. I'm not gonna do this because this looks like a breakdown of a book. These are very specific to people and influencers, not bad. Okay, here's a good one, how to do a SWOT analysis. That's great. I might want to break that down on my blog. So then you're just going to grab that URL and you're going to build out your topic list based on that. So your keyword or topic would be how to do a SWOT analysis and the source is a YouTube video and you can put it literally there. So what you're going to do to create this piece of content is you're going to use AI and I'm going to show you how easy it can get. So if I was writing this piece of content based on how to do a SWOT analysis, which by the way, like great engagement on this, over 100 comments, over 300,000 views, it's eight years old, so we could probably do something that's more relevant and do really well. So I'm gonna open up my project in Continent Scale for Content Hacker because this is a marketing. In Continent Scale, you have projects according to websites. So the example of the Texas real estate, that's a different project because it's a different website. So in Content Hacker, I'm keeping all of my Content Hacker related content. So I'm going to click, how would you like to create your long form blog? And I'm gonna go with YouTube video and look at this magic. You just insert the URL. <laughs> 
And it literally creates a long form blog from that piece of content. What about competitor research? So let's say I was doing this for content hacker. Here's how I would do it. So I would type into Google something that I want to rank for. And now we have AI in search, right? I got access to the search labs. So I'm actually testing it. So what I would want to do is not go down here, but I would actually want to pull something that's ranking in the generative AI citations, because these are value pieces all day if they're getting picked up by generative AI. If you don't have generative AI access, just go down here and pick one of these. But you want to pick something in the top three of Google, and you essentially want to rewrite it for your site. Again, this would be for a keyword. This is something that I want to rank for at Content Hacker. I want to be known for growth focused content marketing. So you want to type in a phrase that you or your client really want to rank for. So what I'm going to do is grab this piece from the generative AI results that's getting a citation. I can see it's a HubSpot blog, so that's awesome. And then what I'm going to do is rewrite this for my blog. So it's 20 content marketing examples that stand out. And to make this way easier, what am I going to do? I'm going to grab the URL and put it into content at scale. And I'm just going to grab the article URL, not all the additional text in that URL field. So it's just going to be the article URL. And let me double check and preview that. Okay, it's working. So then we're going to go back into content scale, click add content, and we're going to create content from an existing blog post URL. Hit next, put in the URL, create content now. And then it will add that to the queue as a fully written post that we can work from, make better according to our style and our personal preferences. As far as your ideas, the world as far as your ideas in raw format, the sky really is the limit. Let's say you're working with a client. Do they have a podcast? Do they want to spiel into their phone and hit record and send you a voice file? If this is you, maybe you want to have the same approach. Take that content, put it into content scale and have it write a fully fresh blog from those raw ideas. In the past, you know, we would give this to a writer. We would give that raw idea to a writer and have them do the keyword research, have them write the piece, have them research proof, have them research and find the right links. We don't have to do that anymore. Content scale makes all of that a breeze. So you would go down here and you would either pick a raw doc so you can upload a Word doc or you can pick custom audio file. And then you just need an FTP link. What I do is I go into the back end of my website and I upload the MP3 that I recorded into my website and then I grab the URL. So literally it's me going into the media library and just hitting add new and then I'm uploading an MP3 and then I'm grabbing that URL and then I'm putting it into content at scale to write a piece of content. And what it'll do is it'll actually go and do the SEO research on the spot and find the ideal keyword to rank for based on that custom audio. Same thing for if I'm uploading a Word doc and doing it that way, uploading my original idea ideas. So pretty crazy stuff. It's now easier than ever to create content for your website. This didn't used to be right. Just December of 2022, I was writing all of this by hand, hiring freelance writers. So this is truly a one-stop solution to go from keyword and raw idea, YouTube video that's ranking really well on Google over into a fully written blog. So let's check on the status of our blogs. Okay, so here's a look at our pieces written for the Texas Real Estate Project. And these are written in about five minutes. So pretty incredible. So let's look at the first one. Why choose me as your realtor? So whenever we open this, we can see at a glance all of the content, as well as this optimization score on the right with the keywords that we're going to use. This one doesn't have a ton of keywords because it's super long tail. That's okay. That's to be expected. But you want to go through this and really make it your own, make it specific to you. But this is a really good piece of content to get you started. If we look at the other piece of content, same thing, we're going to open it up. We're going to see the SEO optimization panel on the right, and we're going to see a lot of details that are specific to the research that this AI writer did for this topic. So it's interesting. A superhero doesn't come cheap. This is really good content. Um, you want to make this more specific to you. Of course, it's pulling this in actually from our project. 
that we filled out for that Texas website. So that's interesting. We got some, you know, a little bit of cleanup to do. AI is never perfect. That's why you want to double check it and make it great and get it ready to go. But this is pretty good content. And again, we don't have a ton of keywords. We do have more than the other one, but we wanna make sure all these keywords are in the content. And over here, like you can see, this keyword is only in this piece one time. That's what that number means. But then nine through 28, that's the range of numbers that you would expect to see it in a content piece ranking in the top of Google. So just a little refresher there on how that works inside the Content at Scale app. But this is definitely what I would do after doing keyword research. I would take it directly to Content at Scale and have it written because it's just so easy. And honestly, it'll save you so much time. I hope that this keyword research strategy tutorial really helped you see what's possible for your blog post and honestly building an entire business with a sustainable traffic stream that you get to own. There's nothing more beautiful on the internet, in my opinion, than that traffic you own. If you have any questions, let us know in the comments. I will be sure to get back to you. I'd love to know your obstacles and your pain points when it comes to keyword research and what you're doing currently to win the those top rankings in Google. And by the way, if you haven't heard, Google's new AI in search is launching. We have a full masterclass on that topic, so be sure to look for it in our YouTube channel. It's on Google's generative search for AI. But that will answer a lot of your burning questions if you're like, well, Julia, AI is coming to search and I don't even know if I should go after keywords at all. Yes, you should. And there's a lot more reasons why this could be a win for a lot of creators and publishers. So be sure to watch that video next. I look forward to seeing you around right here on our channel on YouTube.